What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Pearl Woods, Trill, Santiago. Call me what you want to call me. But uh, call me crazy because I just rode this thing through my side yard, through the fence, into the backyard so I had a better place to shoot because I didn't want to just shoot in the garage. I wanted to have like an actual place to sit down. I also got my dog, Dobby. Kill it. I want to show you guys my dog, too. This is Dobby. Dobby, come here, Dobby. Dobby. This is my dog. His name is Dobby. He's a little Shih Tzu Poodle. He's a Shih Tzu. And he's very cute. And he'll be joining us in our video today to talk about why I decided to buy cruiser motorcycles as not only my first bike, but as my second bike. And why I think that it's not the worst idea ever to go ahead and buy a cruiser. Uh, now, cruisers have their downsides. You know this. Uh, they're heavy. They're slow. Uh, they can be obnoxious. The people who ride them could have a stigma about them. Although that is true with a lot of motorcycles. But through the... I got bought this the end of May. It's the middle of September and I've put 11,000 miles on it. Uh, it's been to Canada. It's been to Niagara Falls. It's been to New York. It's been through Pennsylvania. Um, it's been on a few other like day trips. I do about 1,100 miles a week. And... I wouldn't be able to do it on anything but a cruiser adventure naked. But I chose to go with the cruiser. And there's a few reasons why, and I want to get into why I chose a cruiser. As a 21-year-old, I bought my VTX when I was 20. Um, and why I think it's not the worst idea. Why I think you should do it. Uh, so without further ado, let's just let's jump right into it. Uh, this is my Omaha Royal Star Adventure. It is a 1300cc a uh, liquid cooled four cylinder and is carburetor which uh has its own slew of downsides but it's got a five speed transmission instead of a six speed up down quick shifter i've got cruise control i've got two rear two front speakers and two rear speakers on here i've got a aftermarket passenger backrest or uh driver backrest i've got wind protection all the way through the front fairings i have fork wind protection as well I've got this. As you can see, I did get into a bit of an accident in this thing. Um, I was driving through an intersection in during the Canada trip, if you haven't seen the video. And there was an old lady in front of me. And as soon as she passed the white line to go through an intersection, it turned yellow. She saw that yellow after she was already in the intersection and slammed on her brakes. I was in Canada. It was raining. I was a lot newer to a bike this heavy with this braking system. And... Yeah, I couldn't get out of the way in time. I blocked my rear brake, skidded from the left side of the car to the right side, and nicked the side there, which did zero damage to the plastic itself, which is I'm very grateful for, but it did end up pushing this crash bar here all the way into the middle. And that's not a reason why I like cruiser bikes, but the amount of guards I have on the front did protect my foot in that collision. Uh, and was very nice to have. I was very mad that day. <laughs> very mad that day that, you know, the first time I go out on a big road trip by myself, that ends up happening to me. But let me get into the first reason why I think a cruiser motorcycle is great for a beginner or for somebody with a second bike or for a younger motorcycle enthusiast in general and Dobby. That is going to be cost. Mm -hmm. Now, motorcycles can be very, very expensive, especially brand new ones. If you want the safety features, if you want the ride modes, if you want the newest tech, if you want CarPlay, if you want any of that stuff, newer motorcycles of any segment can get very expensive. I know that CF Moto has been doing a good job keeping their bikes relatively cheap, but if you want a mid-range um, Japanese bike or even a European bike, you're going to be paying upwards of 10 grand, 12, 14 grand. I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, there are beginner motorcycles in the 5 to 8 range. The VTX I picked up with uh, 48,000 miles, I paid $2,800 cash from a dealership. Which means if I was a little smarter and went on Facebook Marketplace, I easily could have gotten it for two grand cash. Okay. Okay. So two grand, registration, title, everything was factored into that for me. I walked out the door for like three. This bike here, I bought this with 20,000 miles. It's at 31 now. 
I bought it with 20,000 miles for four grand cash. This was off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. I paid about dollars to register, pay taxes on it, everything. So for under six and a half grand, I not only have a VTX, which it's a motorcycle that has been absolutely perfect for daily trips, day use. I have a bad lower back, I know. I'm young and I already do. But that bike's been amazing. It got me through my first year of riding. I learned a lot about it. The weight's down low, which we'll talk about in a little bit more. Both bikes for $6,500. Now, obviously, you're going to tell me, hey, but they're both five-speed, carbureted, slow, heavy cruisers. Nobody wants them. And the nobody wants them part is has some truth to it. Uh, people don't really choose cruisers. They don't. Dude, they think the styling's outdated. They associate with older people. It's very true. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to move on to point two. I think cruiser motorcycles are beautiful. Obviously, I'm not a Harley or Indian or Victory or any. I'm not. I don't have a domestic cruiser. I have two. Uh, but I think these bikes look beautiful. I'm a huge fan of Chrome. Shiny things are fantastic. I worked in jewelry for three and a half years uh, before landing my job now. So I think I think chrome is beautiful. I love the fact that um, you could have these beautiful paint schemes. With a cruiser, you have a lot more space to add paint. You have a lot more stuff to paint. So when you're painting your big front fairing here, I've got my three or my two red lines with my gold line going through the whole bike. This is a 2001. Uh, so actually older than me, which I think is awesome, but I think these bikes are beautiful. I spent about eight hours doing a front LED conversion um, with my buddy Steve. We love Steve around here, and I think these things are, I think they just look beautiful. I mean, it is a subjective point I wanted to make, but I think cruisers are sick, and that gets me into another point I have, which is performance. Now, this motorcycle with fluids weighs... 920 pounds, 800, it's like 890 to 920, um, bags can hold 40 pounds each, so now you're looking at 10, 50 pounds in the back, 12, 11, 50, 1200 pounds, um, these bikes are very heavy, this one is, the VTX is in the, the low sixes range, but the weight as far as the VTX is concerned, this bike is very tall for a cruiser, the weight's like right here. This is all, you, all your weight is right there. Versus on a naked or a sport or an adventure, you're much higher on the engine. It's here instead of here. And that makes it so that when you're a big clue ride, I think the VTX is my favorite bike ever in the whole world. And I'm biased, but I think it is, especially for learning. I've taught a lot of people how to ride on the VTX because you don't feel like it's going anywhere. Um, with those smaller beginner cruisers, you don't feel like the bike's going to like fly out under you don't feel it tip and you're like oh shit oh shit oh shit because it's right the weight's right there you can just move it right back up um moving up to a bike like this hasn't been easy for me as you can tell i'm about 140 pounds five foot seven and three quarters so a bike like this has been a bit of a challenge for someone of my skill level to understand to be able to ride but what are you going to be doing on this bike right you're not going to be carving corners and if you do You'll still have a good time. You won't be fast. You won't be fast, but you'll be having a good time. Um, you'll be taking this thing. Now, I have the suburban syndrome now in my life. All of my friends are in college. Um, a lot of my friends I met through college live out of state or in different states. Growing up, I've had a lot of friends who moved out of my hometown. Um, I grew up in a different hometown. So if I want to see my favorite people, I tend to have to travel quite a bit. Um, I live in the Chicagoland area. I have a lot of friends up in Wisconsin. I have a lot of friends down south closer to St. Louis. I have a lot of friends out east towards Indianapolis. Uh, so I have to constantly make five-hour round trips, 100, 130 to 180 mile each way round trips. And nothing's going to do it better than something like this. I have, again, lower back problems, so... Cruisers are very nice because most of them can incorporate backrests into the bike. I also have a back brace I wear. Don't bully me. But for just chomping miles, these bikes are 
very, very stable on highway conditions. When you're riding something like an adventure touring bike, uh, I've ridden a few Versus, uh, Versus 1000s, Versus 650s, and when I compare a Versus to something like this, it a Versus does absolutely fantastic. There's no problems with it on the highway. But when I have a thousand pounds of metal rolling down, there is no wind that's going to affect the way that I ride. And uh, I've ridden in some pretty windy conditions. You know, you're in the flatlands, you're in the plains of Illinois. And these things don't budge, especially with a passenger on the back. I mean, we're just sitting here cutting through air like it's enough going 75, you know, instead of whatever sport bikes want to go. Um, but it's still a great time, and I really, really appreciate it. And so I think um, the ability to make easy road trips, you have a ton of storage, which you can have again on an adventure as well but you have a ton of easy accessible factory storage um you have a very affordable cost um if you're getting into motorcycles these things get pretty good fuel economy now for a cruiser or for a motorcycle in general the fuel economy on this bike's a little rough um if i'm keeping it at around 70 to 75 cruise control i'll get about 41 to 45 miles per gallon if i'm roughing it it's about 35 um, but 45 miles per gallon and a six gallon tank is 230 miles of range. Compare that to my car, which is a old infinity that gets, you know, 15.1 average. Moving to motorcycles was a very easy and affordable way for me to move from having to fill up a tank every time I got to a friend's house to also having to fill up a tank every time I got to a friend's house. But instead of a 19 gallon tank, it's a five gallon, six gallon refill. Um, these things get... Motorcycles in general tend to get way more fuel economy than cars because you're moving a lot less weight. Um, you're, you have a lot less wind that's pushing against you. Instead of a front-wide car, you've got a thin motorcycle. These things are usually tuned, built to let the wind get around it somehow. Um, I think the final reason, or the biggest reason, not the biggest reason, but one of the big reasons that I learned to love cruisers as I bought mine um, for reference, I used to ride sport bikes two or three years ago. I was riding sport bikes for years. And then when I decided to get my license, registration, insurance, everything, I chose to get the VTX and then I stepped up to this. The culture is an acquired taste. <laughs> sure. I love my people. I ride I do ride with a whole bunch of other people. Some younger guys, we all have, you know, naked, um, street bobs, rope bugs. Out of the Harleys, a lot of the Japanese gold wings. I've written a few gold wing rides as well. Um, it's a lot of older people. Uh, it's a lot of people who have some past judgment. And at the same time, the motorcycling world in general is a friendly place. For the most part, my person, uh, uh, I've been able to really enjoy the ride and make a few friends with people whenever I want to. And these are great for doing uh, rides as well. So if I'm going to have a uh, patient on the back for a charity ride for cancer, or if I'm going to be doing a school supply run, or if I'm going to be doing any of the community involvement activities that happen in the Chicagoland area, at least, uh, having this thing out here, having an extra seat on here, that's just been perfect. And the fact that this thing is so smooth and comfortable and, you know, cruisers have a tendency to be shaky and loud and vibrating. This specific bike metric very, very smooth, very comfortable. Um, I'm not trying to sell you on the venture. I'm trying to sell you on cruisers in general. But I think for the money, for four grand, you can buy something like this, something like a Royal Star or something like an older Goldwing. Um, you could buy a mid-spec Naked. You could buy a mid-spec Sport. You could buy a mid-spec Adventure. What I'm trying to say is you could buy a lot of middle-class bikes or you can buy a higher class uh cruiser like this the royal star venture when it came out was like 15 one out the door so paying four for it with twenty thousand miles that's a big depreciative hit and i think that again these bikes have just been so good to me for my purposes i love having a passenger on the back i've had a few different passengers throughout my time riding and uh they all enjoyed cruisers so i've got a few friends who've been on the back who have been on sport bikes before and have never been on something like this be able to just lay back you got the music going you got the cruise control going you can sit there 
I've got all this charge and stuff on my bike as well. For the purposes that I ride, cruisers are fantastic. Now, could I switch into something like a Chrysalis or something like that? Yes. Uh oh, I'm overeating. Alright guys, we're going to have to finish the video in here because the camera got too hot to be outside. I moved the bike all the way back inside. Um, TLDR, if you guys are looking at buying a first motorcycle, second motorcycle, re we're like thinking about, hey, why am I young? Why, why do I want a cruiser? Why should I get a cruiser if I'm young? Why shouldn't I get a sport bike and be like everybody else? Well, they are very affordable in comparison to uh, your sport bike counterparts. They are very heavy, which is a con in and of itself, but provides a lot of advantages when traveling, if traveling is your intention with motorcycles. If it's not traveling, if you just want to go five miles in the city to work every day, please don't buy a cruiser. Um, third, if you love the styling, if you're someone like me who grew up uh, idolizing motorcycles and cars from the 2000 to 2010 era. Everything I own, I would love to be within that area for the rest of my life. Um, if you're someone who idolizes that 2K styling, that early 2K styling of chrome everywhere, shiny, round, curvy things, not sharp, not angular. If you love the curvy stuff, cruisers are a great place to be, um, especially metric cruisers in that aspect. If you want to be able to have a passenger who's not going to beat your ass for trying to take her two hours out of state, you know, I've done day trips to the Dells, I've done day trips to Minnesota from Chicago, and it's been no problem at all. Had a great time, had a blast, we'll always have a blast. Um, those are like kind of the big reasons. If you want to be able to get a group of guys together, if you want to get a group of girls together, everybody in between, if you just want to travel, if you just want to go places, if traveling is your intention, cruisers were made to travel. And yes, there are other forms of motorcycles that can do that. And I am not denying that. And I'm not saying I'll never own anything other than a cruiser. But for my life, for my purposes, for what I do, and for what I bought a motorcycle to do, which is to have more freedom and go further and explore more, I don't think I could have picked a better set of two bikes. Maybe a Goldwing. But I hate how those, I hate how those Goldwings look. I want the new... Guys, if you guys have a 2018 or newer Goldwing and you're just giving it away for free, please. <laughs> um, that's all I wanted to talk about. I just want to talk about why as a 21-year-old I bought a cruiser, why you might want a cruiser as well. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I've gotten a few of my buddies off of sport bikes and into cruisers and they feel safer. They don't feel as, you know, as itchy as they used to. They take life slower. They go places further. They bring people with them. It's, it's a fun... It's a fun thing to have, and it feels great to be able to just sit back, relax, windscreen or not, cruise control or not, speakers or not, anything. I don't even have gas gauges, right? Just get out there and ride. Ride what you want to ride at the end of the day. I'm not sitting here trying to say, hey, you need a cruiser. Hey, you need this. Hey, you need that. I'm just telling you, they're a little underappreciated, and it makes sense from a statistical standpoint when it comes to running the numbers it makes sense that cruisers are not as favorable as other bikes but they're still great bikes they're still motorcycles at the end of the day and they have two wheels and they go forward and some of them have reverse which is also cool because they're heaviest right hope you guys enjoyed this rant this ramble i'm gonna start a new series soon i'm gonna get my ass beat for trying to start it but we're gonna start a new series today right after i finish editing this video I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Two wheels up. Love y'all. Tell me about your bikes. Tell me about your experiences. I want to hear all these stories, all right? See you guys in the next video. Deuces!